Rajiva had this all I think it's very important we ask this question. It's come two or three different times in different ways. What advice would you give to the brothers who had doubts about coming to this conference due to, due to the fact that certain brothers had advised them not to come? These brothers mentioned certain scholars have spoken out against this conference. الحمد لله هذا الموضوع حقيقة ينبغي للمسلم أن لا يأخذ كل كلام يسمعه أو تحذير يأتيه مسلما لا سيما أن أكثر هذه التحذيرات تخلو من الدليل الشرعي على ما أو من يحذر من على على حذر ممن يحذر منه وقد لقينا هذا Some important addendums that need addressing. Ready to bust out of here? We gotta move! Are you afraid of the storm, dear? Or your own imagination? والبعيدة عن تحميل الكلام ما لا يحتمل والبعيدة عن البتر للكلام فهذا على العين وعلى الرأس نعم أما إذا كان ذلك التحديد مبنيا إما على عداء شخصي بين فلان وفلان أو خلاف شخصي بين فلان وفلان أو كان هذا الكلام أو هذا التحذير مبنيا على الإنزامات وقاعدة معلومة لدى لدى ملاف العشريد علمكم أن اللازم القول ليس بلازم إلا إذا التزم أو كان مبنيا على الاحتمالات والظنون أو كان مبنيا على البتر أو كان مبنيا على شائعات يقوم بها بعض المصطادين في الماء العكر انتبهوا لهذه النقاط أو كان مبنيا على رأي لشخص واحد أو اثنين مخالف لآراء بقية العلماء والمشاكل فهذا التحذير غير معتبر ولا يجوز الأخذ به البتة هذا أمر واضح هذا هو الذي تعظيه الأدلة يا أيها الذين آمنوا يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إياكم الظن فإن الظن أقدب الحديث ويقول عليه الصلاة والسلام ك... 
كفى بالمرء كذبا أن يحدث بكل ما سمع ويقول صلوات الله وسلامه عليه بئس مطغية القوم إيش زعم إلى آخر ما ورد من النصوص في بيان في أن يكون الحكم مبنيا على أصول شرعية وعمر رضي الله عنه يقول التمس لأخيك عذرا ما دمت تجد لقوله ماذا محملا فالتسرع في الأحكام على الناس والتحذير منهم حقيقة أنه منهج جديد لم يعرف عن السلف الصالح كذلك وصل الحال إلى أن يعتبر بعض الكذابين ثقات فتؤخذ أقوالهم مسلمة نسبوا قولا إلى إلى فلان من الناس فيأخذه طرف من الناس مسلما بدعوى الثقة وهذا أمر في غاية الخطورة وأضرب لكم آخر مثال في هذا الباب كنا في تركيا وألبانيا قبل أسبوعين فكذب رجل من أهل ألبانيا وهو من الفاشلين في دراسته وزعم أن أحد المشايخ الأفاضل حذروني من الذهاب إلى ألبانيا وإلى تركيا حذروني أنا من أن أذهب إلى ألبانيا أو تركيا وقال إن الشيخ فلان اتصل بصالح وقال له لا تذهب لأنه حزبيون ثم إنني رددت عليه وقلت أنا سأذهب ولو كانوا حزبيين لأرشدهم ولأوضح لهم وهذه الفرية هذه فرية جملة وتفصيل لم أكلم فلان ولم يكلمني وشيخ فاضل أحبه في الله لم أكلمه ولم يكلمني ما التقينا يعني حتى يحصل كلام منذ أكثر من ستة أشهر فهذا الرجل المفتري افترى هذه الفرية وأنا لا أتكلم لأنها تنال لشخصية تنال مني شخصية لكن هذا مبدأ عام خطير جدا وهو فهل مثل هذا يجوز أن يصدق فيما بعد هو يصدق عند بعض الناس مصدق عند بعض الناس وثقة وهو لا يحسن حتى الكلام و فحصل هذا والله إن لم ألقى ذلك الشيخ الفاضل منذ أكثر من ستة أشهر ولم أسمع صوته ولم يسمع صوته هذا مثال مثال آخر جاء أحد الذين يتسرعون في مثل هذه القضايا عندي في البيت وأخذته مع بعض الأفاضل وذهبنا نشرب من حليب الإبل أردت أن أتكلم معه ونبين له بعض ما يقع فيه لأنه حذر من شيخ وطالب علم فاضل من بلد آخر وهو لم يعني ليس صادقا في تحذيره قلت له يا فلان لأن بعض المشايخ قد اتصلوا بي وقالوا فلان حذر منه طيب أعطوني الدليل تعال يا فلان أنت الذي حذرت وأقنعت بعض المشايخ بهذا التحذير أعطني دليلا واحدا على التحذير من فلان والحقيقة أنا أتقرب إلى الله بأن أذكر اسم المحذر منه وهو بريء وهو أخونا الشيخ طاهر وايد من خيرة من جاءنا من أمريكا عقيدة وسلوكا وأخلاقا ومنهجا وما شهدنا إلا بما علمنا وكل ما يقال فيه غير صحيح قلت لهذا الأخ وفقه الله وهدانا الله وإياه للصواب أنت تحذر من طاهر وأغنى وأغ وأقنعت بعض المشاهد بها أعطني الدليل قال ما أدري يمشي مع فلان قلت لا هذا ما هو دليل قلت هل هو منتمي ليه الجهمية المعتزلة حزب التحرير إخوان تبليغ لا طيب يقرر مبدأ مخالفا لمنهج السلف سكت ما دليلك؟ 
قال يمشي مع فلان ما ادري يمدح فلان ممن هو في بلاده قلت لو اخطا في هذا المدح او الثناء على فلان تخرجه من السلفيه وتحذر منه ادري لا اطلت على المترجم لكن موضوع سهل ف خار فلم يجب عن هذه الاسئله بشيء يردد يمشي مع فلان رايناه مع فلان طيب لو رايتني واقف مع واحد من المبتدعة والصوفية واقف يعني مرة التقطت صورة لي في بلد وبجنبي خمارة في تركيا هل معنى ذلك أني أشرب الخمر؟ أنا ماشي في طريقي أريد أن أدخل والطريق مرة به في هذه الخمارة سبحان الله تحكم علي بأني أشرب الخمر بناء على أن الصحف التركية التقطت لي صورة وأنا أمشي أنا وأبني مع بجوار هذه الخمارة أي واحد يدخل من البوابة سيمر بهذا الخمار أو لو أنني ذهبت إلى مكان معين لأنصح أهله الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يذهب إلى الكفار ويعرض عليهم الإسلام ونحن في ولا سيما خارج المملكة قد نزور بعض الجهات أحيانا لتنبيههم وتذكيرهم بالله و ولكن ليس معنى ذلك أن ننخرط معهم أو ندعو إلى فكرهم أو نختلط معهم في ممارسة طقوسهم أو ندعو إلى ما يدعون إليه أو نكثر سوادهم معاذ الله فإذا أذكر هؤلاء بقول الله تعالى ولقد خلقنا الإنسان ونعلم ما توسوس به نفسه ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد إذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال قعيد ما يفد من قول الا لديه رقيب عتيد. وبقول الله تعالى وقفوهم انهم مسؤولون. قول الله تعالى ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم. ان السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل اولئك كان عنه مسؤولا. وبقول الله تبارك وتعالى وقولوا للناس حسنا. كل عباد الذين امنوا يقولوا التي هي أحسن تذكروا هذه الأمور تذكروا الوقوف تذكروا حديث المبلس يا من تصنفون إخوانكم بغير دليل وتحذرون من بعض المشايخ وطلبة العلم بغير دليل تذكروا أننا سنقف وإياكم بين يدي الله سبحانه وتعالى يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم والحقيقة الحديث يطول عن هذه المسألة ولكن أحيل الإخوة إلى كتاب لي جمعته من ضمنته كثير من أقوال السلف حول هذه المسألة ذكرت فيه الداء الذي يعيشه بعض أهل السنة هذه الأيام وسلفيون هذه الأيام ودون أن نسمي أحدا بعينه على طريقة ما بال أقوامه ثم ذكرت أكثر من سبع عشرة فقرة للعلاج مدعومة في النصوص الشرعية من الكتاب والسنة وأقوال سلف الأمة إلى عهد علمائنا المعاصرين وبعض طالبة العلم المعاصرين وفق الله الجميع صلى الله عليه وسلم الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه باطل باطل وارزقنا اجتنابه وأن يهدي إخواننا الذين بغوا في مثل هذه المسائل نسأل الله أن يرزقنا وإياهم نهدينا وإياهم سواء السبيل وإن رزقنا وإياهم الإخلاص والصواب في القول والعمل وقبل هذا وذا كل لابد من أن نراعي أن يكون هدفنا في مثل هذه الأمور وجه الله عز وجل والدار الآخرة وأن يكون الكلام موافقا لهدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله وفيس الزيت هم بعض So to say, one, uh, I think that was a very comprehensive answer from every single angle to this doubt. Um, there's two new questions coming in about this matter. I'm not going to entertain any more of them. Because if you listen carefully to his answer, when the reader uh, translates, you'll see every single doubt that you people have said you sent me is answered in this small, concise uh, you know, speech to share. Firstly, uh, I apologize if I've missed something, so please refer back to the original recording. The Sheikh said that this subject, this topic, is not something that if somebody's statement comes that you take it straight away. Because most of that which is being spread today from the warnings 
They have absolutely no evidence from the Sharia. And these same doubts that have been said regarding this conference, we have met with these same doubts in many different conferences and different uh, Dorat and Mia that we've been to. Sometimes with other virtuous scholars, other students of knowledge, the best of the Salafis, the best of the Duat, and we're teaching and we're uh, doing a conference lecturing and then these doubts come to us. They don't attend this and there's warnings. And all of these warnings, there are absolute no evidence from the Sharia at all. And therefore it's not correct that we take a statement of somebody as if it's the Quran and we take it straight away. Even if a Sheikh, he makes a mistake, this doesn't mean that he's to be warned against. And sometimes the Sheikh who is warning, he is the one who has made a mistake. So his statement, it isn't accepted straight away, as if, it, as if it's the Quran which has been revealed. Rather, any statement, uh, any warning from the scholars, we take it back to the Quran and the Sunnah and the clear evidence. I.e. this warning that he has given, is it based upon absolute clear evidences which have, which have absolutely no doubt? So for example, is he warning against an innovator who is absolutely clear in his innovation and somebody who says and ascribes to certain sects and groups and all of the proofs and the evidences are absolutely clear and that the warning isn't based upon assumptions and suspicion and isn't based upon false conclusions and that his warning isn't based upon uh, interpreting a person's statement in a wrong way or clipping a person's statement so all of this has to be looked at if the warning of a scholar meets all of these various conditions and it has with it a dilla from the sharia evidences and proofs from the sharia then we take it and there's no problem with this however most of the warnings that are, being, are taking place today are either personal problems individual issues uh, ilzamat again drawing false conclusions from the speech of the people and we have a statement or we have a principle in our Sharia that the scholars they say lazim al lazim that in order for a conclusion to be deduced from the statement of a person then it has to be correct this conclusion has to be correct from his speech we can't just draw false conclusions from the statement of a person which is taken out of context and most of these things are broadcast over the internet or these messages and warnings that are sent then these are people only King Graham, we have some important addendums that need addressing ready to bust out of here we gotta move are you afraid of the storm dear or your own imagination. King Graham, we have some important addendums that need addressing. Ready to bust out of here? We gotta move! Are you afraid of the storm, dear? Or your own imagination? ...an excuse for him. And therefore, this new methodology, this new, new manhaj of hastening to make rulings on people and judgments on people, this is a manhaj which is new which we, not, we have not found with our self. And sometimes there is a problem that there are liars who are lying to the scholars and unfortunately the scholars hold them to be trustworthy. And this is something which is very dangerous. And I'll give you an example which happened just recently. The Sheikh said that I went to Turkey and Albania. And I went there and I gave some lectures and some conferences. There's a person in Albania and he's somebody who can't even speak Arabic properly and somebody who has failed in his studies yet he's known and famous for warning and criticizing other people so he spread the news that a particular sheikh, a particular virtuous sheikh, a scholar from amongst the scholar, our scholars he has spoken to me, Sheikh Saleh 
and he has personally warned me against going to this masjid or this place because they are his miyun. And then that person claimed, and then I replied back to the Shaykh and said, no, I'm going to go to them and I'm going to rectify them and correct them. And the Shaykh said that this is an absolute lie. I haven't even seen that Shaykh or spoken to that Shaykh and he's one of our virtuous fudala, Mashaykh, for six months. And yet this person is spreading that he rang me and he warned me, then I replied back to him and all of this is a lie. So this was an absolute lie, but unfortunately this liar He's held to be trustworthy with some of the people and some of the Mashaikh. Also, there are other examples that I could give. Uh, a, a while ago, one of these brothers who is known for warning against other people, against other Tullah Ibrahim, he came to my house. That I see closeness to Allah by mentioning the name of the person that he was warning against, our brother Tahir White. So I said to this brother, What do you have against Tahir White? And he said that he is uh, he walks with the people, he walks with Fulan and Fulan, and he mixes with Fulan and Fulan. And this is why the scholars have warned against him. So the Shaykh replied to him, No, the scholars haven't warned against him, rather, you have convinced the scholars to warn against him. So tell me what evidence do you have for warning against Tahir White? And the Shaykh said that Tahir White is from one of the best students who has come to us with the best aqeedah, the best manners, the best suluk, from the best of the Salafis who have come to us. So when I said to him, what is your evidence? What is your proof? He said, oh Shaykh, he walks with so and so and he mixes with so and so. The Shaykh said, no, this isn't evidence. Is he a Jahmi? Is he Mu'tazili? Does he say he is Tablihi? Has he established a new principle from the principles of the people of innovation? Because we only know goodness from him. And we only bear witness with that which we know and we have seen. So you are the one who has warned, the, who has convinced the scholars to warn against him. So there has to be a clear cut evidence and it's not based upon these warnings. And let's say even if the brother or our brother, he made a mistake. Does that mean now we take him out of Salafiyya? and that we don't uh, uh, cooperate with him. And the Shaykh said, I'll give you an example. A picture was taken of me whilst I was in Turkey. And as I was walking, it just so happened that this picture was taken, there was a pub behind me. Does this now mean that I drink from this pub? I'm put along with those pubs. Even though I'm walking with my son along the street, and the picture was taken just so that the pub was behind me. And what if I'd gone there in order to warn the people against drinking? Didn't the Prophet وسلم, used to go to the kuffar, the disbelievers, and warn, and warn them against the, the evil? And even us, especially when it comes to the countries outside of Saudi Arabia, we go to certain institutes, <coughs> certain places, in order to guide them, to talk to them, to advise them. This doesn't necessitate that we are cooperating with them, or that we are with them, or we agree with them just because we've been there, or that we are trying to increase their numbers. This doesn't mean this. And a person should remember the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ That indeed we have created uh, people. وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْبِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ And we know what the soul of the people it is whispering. And that on the day when the two will come. Uh, and the meaning of the ayah is. And they will inform of that which he intends and that which he says. Many, the Shaykh mentioned many ayat and many ahadith. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ They don't speak about those things for which you have no knowledge. And Allah said, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا That say to the people goodness. Speak goodness with the people. And like this, and also remember the hadith of the Muflis. The hadith of the bankrupt regarding the person who backbites and slanders and his good deeds are given, day, are given away and the sins of the people are placed upon him. So all you who warns against the Tullab al ilm the students of knowledge, and the one who warns against the virtuous Mashaikh. This is something which you should be wary of. And the only person who will be saved on that day, illa man atallah bi qalbin salim. Except the person who comes to Allah with a clean and a pure heart. And 
the Shaykh said that uh, I advise you to read my book which I've recently uh, written and by the permission of Allah we ask Allah to help us in translating it whereby the Shaykh has mentioned many of these problems and he has mentioned 17 different avenues of curing this problem that we are in and each one of these 17 cures that the Shaykh mentioned it is with evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah from the statements of the Salaf and we haven't mentioned the names of the people we haven't mentioned names of certain people in this book because this is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to say ma balu akwan what is wrong with people and he used to keep it ambiguous so in line with this methodology I've written this book as an advice to the people and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to show us the truth as being truth and allow us to follow it and showing falsehood to be falsehood and allow us to stay away from it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and guide our brothers and those who speak against us and I, I reiterate the importance of ikhlas the importance of sincerity and that always your intention and your objective when it comes to warning against somebody has to be that you are seeking the face of Allah okay the next question here for Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Rahim what is the ruling on 